Hey everyone, I'm Trevor, and today we're at Universal Studios Hollywood to give you an early entry strategy. Show you what you can do for early entry at Super Nintendo World. So let's get going. First thing we gotta do is find the early entry line. I'm assuming it's gonna be right over here. We have to have a park ticket and an early entry ticket in order to gain access to early entry. So I think they're gonna be scanning uh, to make sure that you have an early entry first. And now we head to the front of the park where we scan our entrance tickets. So that was indeed just the early entry checkpoint. Now we are coming in here at about 9.08 in the morning. It is eight minutes after early entry, so it looks a little emptier here. Uh, I did early entry a couple of years ago, I feel like, and I'm gonna put in some footage right now to show you what would it would look like here for early entry if you actually showed up before the park opened. So it's officially 7.30 and they haven't started letting people through. I did ask us services last night and they said somewhere between 7.30 and 7.40, they'll start letting people in through the gate. And we are in! Yeah! Amy and the kids, <laughs> James is super excited. Benjamin's super excited. Everyone's super excited. It's 7.33, so not long at all after 7.30 they started letting us in. They bring us to the top of the escalator here and then just hold us, so we're waiting till they take us down to closer to the land. Now that we've reached the lower lot, it looks like there's another gate or rope that they're holding us up at before they'll even take us down towards Super Nintendo World. For today, which is Tuesday, September 17th, the park is officially open from 10 to six. Early entry then starts at nine o'clock. So we do have another 50 minutes. We're gonna go down to Super Nintendo World. It's the only thing that is open right now. We're gonna ride Mario Kart. We're gonna see how long it takes. Mario Kart now is a year and a half old and uh, still selling Super Nintendo world early entry tickets a lot of times they're available right away you could purchase it day of you could purchase it for tomorrow they don't sell out super duper early anymore at this time of the morning they do have barriers up blocking the access to the different paths except for a harry potter world here they just have somebody camped out front uh, directing you down this way so we do have to head to the lower lot first and uh, Super Nintendo World is located in the lower lot, so that is where we do need to head first. I'll give you a, a, a total time it took us to walk from the entrance of the park down to the lower lot once we get down there. Now, as far as early entry strategies go, again, the only thing that you can do is Mario Kart and the games at Super Nintendo World. However, uh, as soon as that early entry hour ends, you can choose to either hit up all the stuff in the lower lot or head back to the upper lot because what's gonna happen is all the new guests that are entering the park, they're coming down here. And so if you want to avoid them, you can actually just go to the upper lot, hit like um, Hogsmeade, that sort of thing. I always find that area to be really empty this time of the morning. And so uh, you could consider one of those two things after you finish up Super Nintendo World. Now taking those escalators does take quite a bit of time, which is why I said uh, you have to factor in the walk to get down here too. As you're getting ready to enter Super Nintendo World, they do have a sign up for the Toadstool Cafe that you can join the queue if you want to eat at that restaurant. A really good benefit of uh, having early entry to Super Nintendo World is that you can get on that queue super duper early before a good chunk of everybody else is able to do that. We're just gonna walk straight into the land here because I love this reveal every single time. Uh, it just gets me amazing to just bam. I love it. And it is 9.23. It took us 15 minutes to get down here. I am with a buddy of mine today. That's why I say us. He's not gonna be on the camera really at all, uh, but we're gonna go do Mario Kart first and see what the wait time is. And it says it is just 10 minutes, which is awesome. I feel like we pretty much walked right on when I did early entry a year and a half ago, but the second time that I wanted to ride, uh, we had to wait 20 minutes. And I just learned if you do need an elevator to get up here, because it's stairs to get to the top of the Mario Kart area here, uh, that you can take an elevator. They'll give you a pass and send you up the elevator. Now it looks like we've reached the back of the line already. Uh, it said it was 10 minutes though, so we're gonna see. So what it was, it wasn't that the line was long, it's just everyone wanted to take a picture in front of Bowser. And since there really is no rush, 
Uh, that was totally fine for, for folks to do that. And yeah, the line's pretty much empty, so this is, this is good. I like this a lot. There's so much to look at in here, and since it is early entry and the line is just moving really well, you don't get to spend a whole lot of time looking, but I'd still rather have this than a 90 minute wait any day of the week, my opinion. But I just love this building. The, the queue for Mario Kart is phenomenal. It looks like they're not running the pre-shows. Now, the first time that we did this, the very first time we ever rode this ride, they weren't doing the pre-shows. We had no clue what we were doing. The second time we rode it, we did get the pre-shows, but when it's just walked through like this, and you don't get any pre-shows, you gotta have to just figure out the ride as you go. I always find these little hat contraptions for this ride to be a little funny. And we have reached the loading zone in about 13 minutes or so. And here is just a quick look at the ride vehicles. The visor does magnetically snap to your little hat contraption. And uh, it's just pretty much like a regular ride vehicle. The seats do use hydraulic lap restraints. So it's, uh, like I said, pretty standard. It's like, can you see it? I don't know if you can see my score. There it is, high score, 148. That was me, whoa! I had the highest score. Highest this month was 297 though. I was 148. There we go. If I take the screen, that thing off my head, you can see my shells on the right. And uh, this is how you see everything. The screen's gone, you can't see anything. There are definitely a lot of stairs in there. And so if you need to take the elevator whenever you are boarding, Ask them for the right-hand side. It will actually let you out in an area that you don't have to go up any stairs to get out of the attraction. Just some tips uh, with that regard. It is about 9.50 or so, 10 minutes until the park actually opens. And uh, it's still a 10 minute wait over there. So if you wanted to, you could go get in line and ride it again uh, before the park actually opens. Uh, definitely something to consider. We rode it twice the last time we had early entry. The other thing you can do is take advantage of the semi-short lines to play the games. I feel like I'm looking over here, let me see if I can block out the, the, the light there. I feel like I've actually seen these lines shorter later in the day now, because I've, I've come a few times now. And yeah, this actually seems quite long, probably because Super Nintendo World is the only thing that is open, but they have four different games that you can play. You have to have a power-up band. You're gonna try to get one of those keys up there is what you're trying to do is earn three keys. If you earn three keys, you can come over here to Bowser Jr. and play a special game against Bowser Jr. Again, you have to have one of the power-up bands for that. Well, now it's 9.55 and uh, they took the gate. I didn't show it earlier, but they had a gate down in front of Transformers. They took the gate away and I just saw some people head in to the mummy ride as well. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna stay down here. We're gonna hit both of these rides, Transformers and the mummy. Uh, my buddy Pete wants to go do Transformers first. So we're gonna go do uh, that first. Hit both of those rides while we're down here and then head on to the upper lot. And see, there are people going in already, even though it's now 9.56. So they do open a little early. Greetings, recruits. I am Ratchet. That is his tale on the exam table. The rest of it is still out there. Do we want to beat them here? Yeah, the Megatron. Love is sent to humor. And we finally found the line. It's just a small line. Maybe maybe the ride doesn't open until 10. So we're just uh, queuing up down here. Watch your head, watch your head. Company. Now, put on your glasses. You guys are my navigators. So if anyone sees trouble... Security breach. Level 2. Lockdown. Uh-oh. That's trouble already. It's all 
also probably helpful to note that right next to the exit to Transformers is where they had the stroller parking for Super Nintendo World. No strollers are allowed inside Super Nintendo World, and so they have a stroller parking over here, and then you can walk over to Super Nintendo World for early entry. I also wanted to tell you that my buddy that I am here with today has never been to Universal, at least not in its current iteration. Uh, it has been like many, many, many years since he has been here. And so he has taken in all the sites, taken photos. We're taking it very leisurely, very casual here this morning, uh, fairly slow. And so um, you're getting a good idea at a nice steady pace. Uh, this isn't my typical rush pace. We are going nice and easy, done two rides. Even though the park is officially opened, I'm gonna keep this early entry strategy video going because I want you to see what we can get done up until about lunchtime or so, um, what the lines are like even after the park opens because if you see, uh, a lot of people are walking past me, they're going to Super Nintendo World. Since we've already got that done, we're, we have free reign of uh, everywhere else in the park. And it looks like they're doing an Optimus Prime meet and greet right now. So they're doing that first thing in the morning. They've got Optimus Prime out here. In fact, we are going to do that meet and greet right now. Oh, it's only a high of 72 degrees today. It's about 65 right now. So I don't think that we want to do Jurassic World. We're going to come over here to Revenge of the Mummy. However, we do want to do this ride before we head to the upper lot. The nice thing is most of the lines have been pretty empty. Just fantastic. They do have the single riders for this attraction, if you wanted to, but this early in the morning, there's no need. And that's it. Where, where there's nobody, there's nobody, nobody in line. We just get to walk right on. Look at that, empty vehicle. At 10.28, we are gonna head back to the upper lot now. Oh, I forgot to say I can't film that ride, so sorry, there's, there's no, no footage. I apologize. Homer. Right now we're headed into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but on the way I saw the studio tour sign here that says that the last tour today departs at 4.15 p.m. And that is because the park closes at 6 p.m. today. It's only open from 10 to 6. Shortened hours for the fall season. Uh, but we're going up the back way right now into Hogsmeade. We can go straight to Forbidden Journey. I don't think I've ever noticed that they had the Weasley car here from Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> That's really fun. That's just outside of Hogwarts here. And it does say that it is 10 minutes for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey right now, about 10.45 in the morning. It's Dumbledore's office. Voldemort is only as powerful as we make him. And remember... What's this part of you? Remember, meet Hermione in the room for quiet. See, Ron, everything worked out perfectly. <laughs> Come on, move the button. Don't tell me. Now we are in an elevator again because we are getting a mobility-assisted uh, loading where the walkway does not move. So we're gonna see how that goes. I have never seen how they do the, uh, the, the handicap loading here. The downside was that they intercepted us before we got to the sorting hat. So we weren't able to really get up close to it in the queue. And we're in another elevator now. Check this out, this is fun. No muggles. <laughs> and it looks like here is the stationary loading platform so we can get on without any additional um, you know, struggles. And now we're done and back in the elevator. We did have to sit on the platform for probably about five minutes for the, um, you know, the, the one, the vehicle that we were in to actually go on the track. And the elevator brings us straight to the gift shop, Filch's Emporium. The next up, we're gonna go over and do a flight of the Hippogriff and it's gonna be the last ride that we do here in this video. It's currently 11.15, so it took about a half an hour. Uh, it was a little bit longer than 10 minutes, maybe about 15, and then we had the uh, mobility aid load station that uh, took a little while. The ride actually also stopped on us. Uh, that's something that happens in that attraction. Just be aware uh, the ride can sometimes stop. It actually stopped twice while we were on it. Once right as we were about to get off the ride. But uh, next up coming over to a flight of the Hippogriff. We've got a scarecrow guy hanging up here. I don't think I've ever seen him before. I don't know if he's new or if I'm just un unobservant. It says it was a five minute wait, but the line's all the way back here. 
find a little baby in the back. We have some containers of last ended skirts over here. A couple items of note, I did not notice any food locations open right when, like during early entry. Pretty hungry, didn't eat any breakfast here this morning. We're gonna go to the three broomsticks right now. Maybe I'll put that in this video as well. But I did just wanna let you know that we rode five total rides, Mario Kart, Transformers, The Mummy, Forbidden Journey and Flight of the Hippogriff all before 11.30. So in the first two and a half hours, there's only 10 rides in the park. We rode five. So we rode half of the rides in the park in the first two and a half hours. That gives us uh, the next six and a half hours to really chill and just enjoy. Uh, my buddy Pete wants to spend a lot of time here in Hogwarts, uh, Hogsmeade, just looking at the different shops, taking pictures, that sort of thing. So I'm uh, not gonna film like the rest of the day. I, I will film lunch here before we sign out, but um, that's, that's it kind of for our early entry strategy. For lunch, we are gonna come to the three broomsticks. Just have to do it. And as I typically do, I got bangers and mash. I feel like I always get this every time I come here. It's honestly one of the best things that they have. So amazing. I love the bangers and mash. And my buddy actually got one of these souvenir butterbeer steins. So that's pretty cool. How neat is that? I just love eating in here. The ambiance is wonderful. Just so much to look at. And that's it for our time here today at Universal Studios Hollywood, giving you some early entry tips and seeing what we could get done in the first couple hours that the park is open during the fall. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Got questions? Drop them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer them. Click this video to keep watching. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next time.